Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Obi-Wan Kenobi series first and foremost and we've got a few big updates for the show as we go into the season finale next week. In a new video message posted to the Star Wars Twitter account, Hayden Christensen confirmed that episode 6 will have quote, the rematch of the century. He told fans to enjoy it after expressing gratitude for the fan reception to his big return to Star Wars. He's been amazing. And then later in an exclusive interview with Screen Rant, Hayden inadvertently confirmed that we're probably going to see Vader helmetless at one point during his final duel against Obi-Wan. This was something that making Star Wars put forward in their original leaks for the show and they said it'd be similar to what we see in Rebels in Twilight of the Apprentice. Only this time it's Kenobi who will slash part of Vader's helmet off and we're going to see part of Anakin's face underneath. In this interview at one point, Hayden says, quote, they incorporated my voice a little bit here and there when referring to Darth Vader. Now, as we know, James Earl Jones is the one who returned to reprise the vocal role, so Hayden is probably referring to the big moment coming up in the finale. That is going to be such an intense scene, and it's also where Obi-Wan is rumoured to talk about how Padme saw the good in him. We might get some Padme flashbacks. Now, I don't think Natalie was involved in the show in any way, but they might do what they did in earlier episodes and show us scenes from the prequels. But a brand new authentic flashback would be such a treat. So now, my dear friends, that's not the only piece of Kenobi news we have. We're now going to talk about some huge details for the ending revealed to us by making Star Wars. In an exclusive, they clarified how events between Luke, Reva, and Obi-Wan are going to play out in Episode 6. And the most important thing they note is that it does not break canon. So according to the new info, Reva is heading to Tatooine, and when she threatens young Luke, a chase happens. However, from our perspective as the audience, we see her getting ready to use her lightsaber, but Luke does not see the weapon. She ends up not using it in the end and changes her mind. Reva is conflicted in these moments. She knows what she's got to do, but she doesn't have the strength to do it. And it's here that we get more flashbacks of her life. We see her being taken from her parents, thrust into the Jedi Order, surviving Order 66, and then being taken to Fortress Inquisitorius. Reva realizes she cannot take the life of another innocent child or tear him away from his family. So Kenobi rushes back to Tatooine, but is too late. He realizes that Reva cannot and will not harm Luke. So Obi-Wan puts his faith in her and lets to leave the homestead, trusting that she will keep the secrets. So according to the leak, that is how episode 6 will play out. Now in the original ending, Reva was going to go to Vader, tell him that she killed Kenobi, but Vader realizes that she's lying and so he kills her. But as we know, that's been updated. She apparently will not die in the end, but let's wait and see what happens. And if you really think about it guys, the events of episode 6 are a callback to the first episode, when Reva confronted Owen and asked him if he thinks he could protect his family from her. I guess the answer is no, but Reva on her own terms is going to back down. There is a lot of unknown in the final part and that's what makes it so exciting. The leaks so far have provided a wonderful, accurate outline, but Deborah keeps throwing in so many surprises that nobody saw coming, so I'm sure we're in for a banger in episode 6. So now, my dear friends, some excellent news for Bounty Hunter fans. Star Wars has just announced a canon reference book coming out in November, Secrets of the Bounty Hunters. They did similar books with the Sith and the Jedi, but now it's time for the Bounty Hunters to get the spotlight. As we know, Bounty Hunters are an integral part of the Star Wars universe. I would even argue, in some cases, they're just as important as the Force users. Throughout the years, in the Clone Wars, in live action, in the comics, we've seen multiple stories of Boba Fett, Cad Bane, IG-11, Bosk, and so on. But the biggest project in recent years that really brought back the idea of bounty hunters being so important is of course The Mandalorian. So a newly announced book, Secrets of the Bounty Hunters, is a fully illustrated canon reference guide to the biggest, baddest, and most daring in the galaxy far, far away. And amongst the characters to be focused on, we've got Boba Fett, Din Djarin, IG-11, Cad Bane, Sam Wessel, Aura Singh, Dengar, Bosk, Zuckus, and so many more. And just like the Jedi and Sith books, this one is being told from one perspective, specifically the perspective of everyone's favorite pirate, Hondo Onaka. That's right, the stories of all these bounty hunters are being told from the perspective of Onaka, who will help to guide readers through the shadowy underworld in the galaxy that we all love. The blurb for the book reads as follows. In this in-universe book, Onaka recounts fascinating tales about the galaxy's most famed bounty hunters. Hondo also delves into the wider world of bounty hunters, sharing all he knows about notorious starships, dangerous underworld tech, and more. Included will be incredible artwork, interactive features, 
pop-ups, booklets, and fans even get a poster of the cover art, which by the way, looks magnificent. Now I'm so excited for this one. I've always been obsessed with the bounty hunters of Star Wars, especially the more niche ones, but having grown up during the prequel era, I'm specifically very interested in Sam Wessel, Boba Fett, and Aura Singh. As I said, this book releases on November the 1st. Now, we're going to go back to the Kenobi series because I found a really interesting interview with Hayden Christensen, and in there he reflects on a very specific scene from Attack of the Clones, the one where he and Padme return to Tatooine, and he speaks to Watto. The interesting thing is, George Lucas did not teach Hayden any Hatties, which is the language that Watto speaks, but Hayden recalls being told by George Lucas to invent a new language called Wattonese to speak to Watto in. In the interview, Hayden was asked if there was a moment from the two prequels he starred in that he's particularly proud of. Of, and this is what he said, I certainly went back and watched all the films again and studied Anakin as much as I could. There is just a lot going on with the character, he's always sort of processing and trying to figure out what's going on around him. I don't know that I have a scene that I'm most proud of, but there's a scene where Anakin goes back to Tatooine in episode 2 and speaks to Watto. The script had the dialogue written in English and then in parentheses it said in Watanese. It wasn't until the day before we started filming that I went to George and I was like, what should Watanese sound like? And he was like, well, you know, so long as it doesn't sound like English or any other language that might sound familiar, you can just make it up. So Hayden says he was rushing the night before to try and figure out how to make up Watanese, and he says, quote, every time I see that scene, I get a bit of a kick out of it, and I must say, he did a great job of making up a language in the moment. Me bosca de Shmi Skywalker. But as I say, the language he should have been taught for that one sentence was Hutties, because that's the language that Watto speaks. But you've got to love George's sense of humour. The creator of the Star Wars universe sometimes has the most funny stories attributed to him. I can't believe it's been 20 years. Two whole decades have passed since the release of Attack of the Clones. The utmost important aspect of Attack of the Clones, at least for Star Wars, was that the beginning of the Clone Wars would form the centerpiece of Star Wars content for over a decade, spanning two animated shows and a third starting during the Disney era. Episode 2 was also monumental for some of the legacy characters, with the start of Anakin's fall to the dark side beginning in this film. Hayden's return to the Star Wars franchise has been embraced by fans in a huge way. It's fantastic that he's aware how much fans love him, so hopefully he can look back on the prequel era where critics really dug into him and just laugh at the great moments like this one. Hayden is a true gem to this franchise, and with one episode to go, I'm sure they're going to maximise his use in episode 6. I can't wait guys, just three and a half days to go. Are you hyped for the finale? Let me know in the comments down below. And with that said my dear friends, that brings us to the end of this Star Wars news update. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. May the Force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg, have a good one.